G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for another trade related video. It is the first video following the 2022 Grand Final uh, where the Cats absolutely slaughtered Sydney. We will do a podcast very shortly covering that. I won't do that in today's video, uh, but we'll get together Thursday I think and uh, talk about you know what went down and, and then probably some more trade content to be honest because this trade period is looking enormous. Uh, so in today's video, I'm going to go through uh, pretty much every club in the league and talk a little bit about what their trade period may look like. Some clubs are far busier than others, as you can imagine, uh, but there's a fair bit going on. So hopefully this video will break it down into a way that is uh, easy to follow. It's been great being back on the channel uh, since I got back from Europe at the start of the month. I've uh, been uploading somewhat regularly, uh, which is great. That's going to continue all through the trade period, of course, all the way up to the draft and then probably a little bit post-draft and then we'll see what happens after that. Probably not too much to talk about. It's been great having you guys back as viewers. Uh, according to my analytics, though, only 42% of you who watched the videos over the last month have actually hit subscribe. So if you could do us a favor, help grow the channel, breathe some life back into it after I took a holiday, uh, that would be great. Also, don't forget we are still sponsored by Manscaped and you can get 20% off and free shipping on their male grooming products with the code TRUEFOOTY20 all caps all one word at checkout they do far more than just the body shave and now you get a whole variety of products uh, we talk a little bit about it in the podcast as well they do shampoos they do ball toners as you're probably well aware uh, they've got everything so do yourselves a favor check them out if you buy something make sure you use our code for 20% off so we're going to go through this list club by club and talk a little bit in summary about what each club is doing. So I'll start off in alphabetical order with the Adelaide Crows, who hold picks 5, 23 and 77 at this year's draft, which is important to note uh, in terms of sort of gathering what draft capital they have to, to trade in for some of their players. So the main guy that they're linked to this offseason is, of course, Isaac Rankin of the Gold Coast Suns. And I think people expect that to be a fairly straightforward swap, at least in my eyes. Pick 5 is likely what they're going to have to offer up. If I were the Crows though, I'd probably push for something coming back the other way, probably one of Gold Coast many picks in the 20s this year, and maybe they offer up a future third as well. So maybe five and a future third for Rankin and a pick in the 20s this year would probably be an ideal result for the Adelaide Crows. They're also linked to Caleb Poulter of Collingwood, who um, played, I think, 10 games in his first season, and I think he played one game this year at AFL level, so they could get him fairly cheaply. And then of course, there's Jack Graham as well at Richmond, who is recently in indicated he would be open to a move to South Australia. There's nothing concrete yet, but Adelaide could well be interested in a play like Jack Graham. Next up, we have the Brisbane Lions who are poised for a massive off season. They're linked to Josh Dunkley, who's apparently nominated them as his preferred destination, finding a new club. And then of course, they've got potentially the number one draft pick in Will Ashcroft to consider as well. So they've got to not only trade in uh, close to an A grade talent, A grade midfielder, I think it's fair to say. They've also got to keep the draft picks and accumulate the points to be able to match not only pick one for Will Ashcroft, but also Jasper Fletcher, which is likely to fall somewhere in the second round. So it's going to be a really busy offseason for them. Dan McStay is, of course, likely to go to Collingwood as a free agent. So they might get an end of first round compensation. It's going to be interesting to see how they negotiate a deal for Dunkley because he's probably worth two first rounders. But at this stage, that's say pick 15 and pick 15 next year. Uh, maybe that's a little bit shy of the mark for a player of Josh Dunkley. So I've said it before in previous videos. I'd be interested to see what they do. Do they swap their first and future first to a club for a pick in the top 10 and then a pick in the 20s? It remains to be seen, but they're going to have to be a little bit creative as it stands. They're also linked to Jack Gunston from the Hawthorne Footy Club, uh, but I think that will be a fairly late round pick if that swap goes ahead. Next up, we have Carlton, and these guys aren't tipped to be particularly busy this offseason with uh, one deal likely to go ahead for Fremantle's Blake Akers. I read recently it's going to be likely a future third, uh, which is pretty good value for a player of Blake Akers' caliber. A little bit light on what his actual value is, but you have to consider that he's not really being offered a, a decent contract at Fremantle. He's packed his bags already. Fremantle aren't in a great position of bargaining power here. So I think they'll get the Blake Akers deal done. And they're also linked to Adelaide's Fisher Mackesy, uh, who was a former top 10 pick, but hasn't really hit his straps, so to speak, at Adelaide. And uh, it's unclear what he could go for, a future second or a future third. I'm not really too sure, not too close to that situation. But they'll end up with Blake Akers and potentially Fisher Mackesy. Next up is Collingwood, who are definitely going to be one of the biggest players this offseason with all the players they're linked to. We talked about Dan McStay as a free agent that'll get done Bobby Hill is also tipped to get there fairly early in the trade period uh, I expect GWS probably want a future pick considering you know all the other players are going to lose we'll talk about them soon Billy Frampton apparently has also expressed interest in getting from Adelaide to Collingwood uh, and they potentially
potentially see him as a key back, I understand. And then there's also Tom Mitchell to consider, who has indicated he wants to end up at Collingwood. Uh, 29 years of age, maybe worth a second round pick or future second. It's unclear to me how they're going to get all these deals done. And then earlier today, it came out that Jordan Dugowie has declined Collingwood's latest contract offer on the basis of uh, some broad contract terms around his behavior. It doesn't really, it's not really clear what that means. For me, it was probably more just the wording of the contract clauses. So there is a little chance that Dugowie, who's out of contract, does leave Collingwood, but I think at this stage, he's probably gonna stay. I think they'll just have to negotiate some of those terms and make them a little bit more specific. How are they gonna get all these deals done? They currently don't hold a second rounder, uh, but they are also tipped to lose Brody Grundy potentially Oliver Henry and Caleb Poulter as well that I explained previously. So there's a lot going out, a lot coming in. Collingwood probably end up with, will certainly end up with McStay and Hill and probably Frampton. Tom Mitchell, that one's a little bit more uncertain, but regardless, Collingwood is going to be balls deep in this trade period. Then you have Essendon, who uh, are actually tipped to be pretty quiet this particular offseason. They nearly got Bobby Hill last year, couldn't get the deal done as uh, GWS didn't agree to terms. They've been loosely linked to uh, Jack Bowes of the Gold Coast Suns, we'll talk about that deal shortly, and Jack Bytel of St Kilda, but nothing too dramatic from an Essendon point of view this offseason. If they can end up with Bowes and potentially a pick in the top 10, as was reported, uh, that's a pretty damn good offseason. They are one of those teams that might sort of trade up and try and get a Harry Sheasel in the draft. But again, there's nothing concrete really suggesting they're going to try and do that. It's probably more of a fan theory that I have. Next, you have Fremantle, who again are going to be very active this offseason, both in a good way and a bad way. Obviously, they're tipped to get one of the biggest fish on the market in Luke Jackson. I think that will happen. I don't think West Coast is a realistic sort of destination for Jackson at this point. So they're going to be clearly focused on that, but also linked to losing guys like Lobb, Logue, Tucker, Akers, and Lloyd Meek. And that will help them accommodate a deal for Luke Jackson. Jeremy Sharp of the Gold Coast Suns is also tipped to want to go home and linked to Fremantle more so than West Coast. So that's a play that could come in. At this stage, they have declined Rory Lobb's request to join. I think it was the Western Bulldogs he officially requested. He certainly requested a trade, uh, but Personally, I think that deal will get done, but it does depend entirely on them landing Jackson. So if they don't land Jackson, which they will, then Lobb stays, but I reckon he goes to accommodate this deal. Then you've got the reigning premiers, Geelong, who uh, are linked to a couple of young players across the league, Tanner Bruin and Oliver Henry of GWS and Collingwood, respectively. Uh, this is one is going to be tricky to get done because they hold pick 18 in this year's draft and then probably a late first rounder in next year's draft. The second pick is pick 36. Personally, I think pick 36 this year or next is going to be a little bit light on for either Henry and Brun, but I also can't really see them trading two first rounders to recruit these players, even though both of them were first rounders from memory. I'm also not entirely sure Geelong is allowed to trade both first rounders considering you know they gave up two first rounders for Jeremy Cameron as well. So the rules stipulate you have to take a certain amount of first round picks across a four year period. They're going to have to try and get these players in without trading both of their first rounders. The Gold Coast Suns are also going to be a fairly active side this trade period. They've got a whole raft of selections. They've got 7, 25, 31, 34, then 43 and 52. And from what it sounds like, they're not going to need to take all of these picks. So they're going to try and trade some of these second rounders into next year's draft, in my opinion. We've talked about them potentially and likely losing Isaac Rankin. We do know also that Ben Long has requested a trade to the Gold Coast Suns. They were linked to Johannesson as well, offered him a three-year deal, but he today re-signed with the Western Bulldogs. There was also a bit of buzz this week. Uh, they've apparently put Jack Bowes, who's got a back-ended contract on the trade table along with pick seven. So they're offering pick seven to a club who is willing to take Jack Bowes off their books. Now, I know Gold Coast have been notoriously poor traders in the past, but, but obviously that doesn't mean pick seven and bows for absolute peanuts in return. I think they're going to be looking at trading into next year's first round. The clubs that have been linked to bows and pick seven have been Essendon and St Kilda. So perhaps they have some success in that respect. They're also looking to offload, I think, Jeremy Sharp and Braden Fiorini. Again, contracted players who are taking up list space and contract dollars uh, who are both linked to moves to Western Australia and Victoria as well. So it's going to be a pretty active offset and again for the Gold Coast Suns. Next, you have the other expansion side, the GWS Giants, who have a uh, pretty good draft hand going into this period, but unfortunately, they're going to lose Tim Taranto, Jacob Hopper, Bobby Hill, and Tanner Brun as well, all top 20 picks. And three of those players were first round draft picks, if I'm not mistaken, and Bobby Hill would have been early second round at a guess. Their main focus this offseason will be maximizing the return for these guys, uh, particularly if Taranto and Hopper both go to Richmond, then they can end up with three 
or four draft picks out of that. What they may do is look to trade some of their current picks into next year's draft, which is stronger and obviously, you know, spreads out the amount of picks they have to take this year as well. In terms of trade targets, I think they had some interest in Lloyd Meek and Brody Grundy, but they may settle for another Ruckman. They've been loosely linked to Essendon's Nick Bryan because I don't think they're going to be successful with Meek or Grundy. Then you've got the Hawthorne Footy Club who so far have recruited Carl Amon. That's not official yet, but when the free agency period opens, that is almost certainly to happen straight away. They've also been linked to Fremantle's Lloyd Meek as a Ruckman as well. It's not clear beyond that what kind of moves they'll be making. Again, like Essendon, I think they're a candidate for a team that may trade up to try and get an early pick to get Harry Sheasel. Again, that's more my theory. I think they're a big fan of Sheasel, really high talented Victorian kid. On top of that, I think they're looking for new homes for potentially Jack Gunston and Tom Mitchell as well to uh, get some, I guess, contract money back onto their books as well. Then you've got last year's premiers, the Melbourne Footy Club, who currently are without a first rounder having traded it to Sydney last year. Their main focus this offseason, you'd think, will be getting the best return possible for Luke Jackson, who will likely end up at Fremantle. And I think they're likely to also end up with Brody Grundy, whose relationship with Collingwood is fairly soured, and they're probably going to have Collingwood pay some of Grundy's salary to play for Melbourne as well. But given where Melbourne's list is at, obviously they're in contention. Grundy's still only 28, and if they get back into the first round this offseason, it could still be fairly productive for them. Then the Wooden Spooners are up next, who may or may not be coached by Alistair Clarkson. You'd think so at this stage that they will be. Uh, they're again tipped to be pretty active this offseason with a whole host of mature age talents linked to moves to North Melbourne. These guys include Griffin Logue, who I think has officially requested a trade to North, and Darcy Tucker. I'm not sure if that one's official yet, but he's certainly been linked to North Melbourne as well. So two Fremantle players there, and Hunter Clark has also been reportedly linked to a move to North Melbourne. On top of that, there's St Kilda's Brad Hill, who's on a massively inflated contract at St Kilda, who is interested in playing under Clarkson again, and uh, perhaps St Kilda also want a bit of contract space off their books as well. It is hard to see how North Melbourne get all of these players onto their list. They did get a sort of, not a priority pick, but kind of like a package assistance from the AFL uh, where they got a future second and a future third, which they have to trade for established players. So maybe that helps them get, you know, Hunter Clark with a future second, Darcy Tucker with a future third. Then they have their own future second, which could get Griffin Logue. And at this stage, a future second for them could be pick 20. For me, it's a little bit unclear to see how Brad Hill on top of those three gets onto their list. But either way, North are going to be an interesting team to watch this offseason. Next up, you have Port Adelaide, who have already lost a player unofficially. Carl Amon will likely join the Hawthorne Footy Club at the opening of the free agency period and I think they think the compensation that's likely to generate is pick around 26 to 27. This for me is probably what's going to unlock a trade of Junior Rioli from West Coast to Port Adelaide. I've talked about this in previous videos. I think that's about the asking rate. I think that's what it'll go for. But regardless, Junior Rioli is probably their primary trade target this offseason. They were linked to Josh Dunkley who has then subsequently requested a trade to the Lions. But I guess you could say that it's not over till it's over. They're still in theory in the race for Josh Dunkley. We did talk a little bit earlier about Jack Graham, who may be open to a move to South Australia. If Adelaide have their hands full getting the Rankin deal done, Port Adelaide could swoop and get a very handy player in Jack Graham on their list. Then there's Richmond, and I've done videos on this situation already, but they're likely to bring in both Tim Taranto and Jacob Hopper, who have requested trades to the Richmond Footy Club. And this, in my opinion, is probably going to cost Richmond two years worth of draft picks. Jack Graham potentially leaving the club may allow them to get back into the first or second round either this year or next, but it's obviously going to be a trade focused sort of year for Richmond this offseason. Next up is St Kilda who have been linked to a few players leaving. Uh, there's Hunter Clark who we talked about, Ben Long to the Gold Coast Suns and potentially Brad Hill of course as well. They're one of the two teams linked to Gold Coast Jack Bowes as well as pick seven. Again this is likely going to cost them a future first pick I would imagine. Of course the cost of getting Bowes in pick seven is being able to take on his massively backhanded contract but that might be another thing that sort of unlocks a move for Brad Hill to move to another club. They also had a few retirements which opens up some money for them. Paddy Ryder, Jaron Geary and Dan Hanabry of course retired off their list as well. So good opportunity here for St Kilda to get creative. Then there's the Sydney Swans, the uh, gallant runners up we'll say in this year's grand final. Not really linked to getting too many players onto their list. Obviously they've got a great list balance as it currently stands. Plenty of top end talent. They were linked to Dusty Martin earlier in the year and obviously he's either re-signed or about to re-sign with Richmond as well. So I expect it to be a quiet trade period for the Swans this year. 
Now, second to last, just like the latter, we've got the West Coast Eagles, who again, I think this will be a fairly quiet trade period for. There was some preliminary interest in Luke Jackson, but it sounds like the Eagles have called on that and it's likely he's gonna end up at Fremantle. So they're likely gonna have a pretty draft focused off season, at least in my opinion. The primary focus will be getting uh, decent compensation for Junior Rioli. They were linked to maybe Martin Fredericks from uh, Port Adelaide's list as well as a small defender. No idea how realistic that is. Then there was also some talk about Jaden Hunt, who's uh, out of contract at the Melbourne footy club that they may look at him for free that one surprised me a little considering he's 27 years old other than that uh, Rowan O'Brien has uh, openly admitted that they're looking to trade down pick two uh, to potentially hopefully another top five pick and maybe another second rounder as well so aiming for five picks in the top 30 I think is the focus for West Coast this offseason and finally you've got the Western Bulldogs who are looking to add some tall talent this offseason it appears obviously linked to a trade for Rory Lobb again I think that deal does get done despite Fremantle's efforts uh, Adam Tomlinson has apparently had a medical at Witten Oval as well. Then, of course, Liam Jones is apparently going to be re-entering the league uh, with the Western Bulldogs as a delisted free agent as well. So suddenly that's some tall timber that they've got, which is probably the weakness at either end for them. Then there's a couple of key players who may request trades away from the club. Josh Dunkley may end up at Brisbane at this stage. It seems like he's not going to play for the Bulldogs next year. So that's a good chance for them to get a couple of first rounders back into the list, both this year and next. And then, of course, it came out today as well that Lockie Hunter is open to a move away from the footy club as well so they're kind of losing a bit of midfield talent but strengthening at the bookends of either side of the field so it has appeared a weakness for the Bulldogs in recent years a lack of a real lockdown key defender so Liam Jones could be a great pickup for them for, for free basically Tomlinson may go back as well but they probably also need to draft a key back as well and they're probably going to end up with a draft capital to do it all right guys that was my quick attempt at a brief summary of every club's potential offseason moves this trade period let me know in the comments uh, uh, what you learned I guess from this video and uh, perhaps something that I missed as well let me know what you agree with and disagree with as always appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you in the next video cheers